Hello. Hi, everyone, or anyone. Is anybody there? Just give it a second. Um, hi, I'm so excited. I'm Moxie. I am a sex educator with Pleasure Chest, and I am here to talk about one of my favorite things, and that is sex toys. Um, if there's one thing I know, it's sex toys. Um, I have been doing this for years at this point, and I've been using sex toys for years, so it just made sense to me to do this workshop. Um, <clears throat> yeah. As you're coming in, feel free to say, hey, what's up? <clears throat> Hello, everyone. We'll give it a second on this fine Thursday evening during Masturbation May. All right, so yeah, I'd like to know where everybody is joining us from. I am in Chicago currently, and we are enjoying a lovely spring evening. Um, it got pretty nice today, loving it. It's feeling good out here. <clears throat> <laughs> Some of us are still at work. That's okay. <laughs> Gotta pay those bills. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so again, once again, I'm Moxie Brown. I use she, they pronouns. And I am with the Pleasure Chest. I'm a sex educator uh, with the Pleasure Chest. And I've been with Pleasure Chest for about seven years. And uh, through Pleasure Chest, I've met many different people. I've gotten a lot of different opportunities to connect with people around sex toys, um, which is just a huge interest of mine. Even before Pleasure Chest, I was, I was that girl who <laughs> had to drag my friends to the sex toy shop. Um, yeah, just a bit about Pleasure Chest. Um, we have been around since 1971. Um, one of the oldest adult retailers in the US. And we put a heavy emphasis on inclusive pleasure-based sex education um, because we understand that um, in our formative years, uh, in our schooling, that is not what our sex education was. It was not pleasure-based um, if we even got any. So um, here we are today as adults, and we still need to figure out how to feel good and what's out there for us. Um, our workshops are inclusive. So I'm teaching from my experience and my perspective, but um, I will do my best to, um, you know, answer any questions you have, um, try to speak to the experiences you're curious about. Um, it is Masturbation May, which is one of my favorite months. Um, and for Masturbation May, we really go hard, like pun intended. Um, <laughs> we have some great workshops lined up this month. Um, I will give more details about that, obviously, this one. But <laughs> um, we've got some workshops. There's some great posts um, on our blog, on our website, on our Instagram. Um, so just celebrate with us and uh, educate yourselves. There's a lot to learn about. Uh, self-pleasure and just some of the things that are out there, some of the exciting things that are out there. Um, I do have uh, some questions for, for those of y'all that are joining us right now, um, have a bit of a, a poll. And I just want to know um, when it comes to sex toys, like how experienced are you? I'd like to know who I'm talking to so that I can uh, kind of uh, curate this workshop toward that understanding. 
And yeah, continue to uh, pop any questions in the chat. Let me know where you are joining us from. <clears throat> um, while I wait for some responses, I just wanted to touch on um, sort of the motivation behind this class. Um, it is a, it's a not, not so like a niche specialized class. It is a more uh, general, you know, sex toys thing, but I work um, in adult, in an adult store and I meet people. And uh, these are from the questions I get from uh, customers looking for sex toys and not really knowing where to start, um, being overwhelmed by all the options. There are so many options out there. I was just talking to my coworker and even sometimes we're overwhelmed by the options. Um, so that this is why I wanted to do this workshop, just to um, give y'all some tools to kind of uh, narrow things down and start thinking a little bit more critically about um, how to shop for sex toys, um, how to know what's out there and you know, know what not to spend your time on. <clears throat> um, let's see here. So, okay, I, I'm seeing that for most of y'all, we have a little bit of experience with sex toys. That's great. Um, that's awesome. I was kind of hoping for that um, because that tends to be like the customer base that I get in the store. So thank you. I do have a second question as well, um, just about, because I'm a nerd about this, um, <laughs> just how you shop for sex toys. Like where do you purchase your, your sex toys? because there are many places you can do that and uh, not just the store, but I am obviously, I'm biased. I think the best thing to do is to go to a, a sex toy shop, but yeah, I just wanna see. Um, yeah. um, a couple other things, you will see me looking down. I have my notes. Um, I am a, I'm not a linear public speaker, so I need notes. So you'll see me looking down. I'm not sexting, um, maybe not. <laughs> um, another thing, oh, okay, we got the results. That was quick, y'all. Oh my goodness, okay. So I'm seeing, okay. Brick and mortar shops is leading, awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. We're gonna get started. <laughs> um, I want to start with uh, just some reasons to buy a sex toy. Um, and you can also put in the chat, like, why do you, when you know that it's time to get a sex toy, why? Like what brings you to that, um, to that conclusion? Um, I think for me personally, it, it's uh, it's in an indulging in my desires and um, learning more about my desires, um, as well as like lines up with like just body changes. Uh, I definitely have my go-to toys that I've had for years, but I understand that you know at times those aren't going to do what I need it to do. Um, so body changes is a good reason to purchase a new sex toy. Um, relationship status. It's interesting because um, in the store, we see both. We see folks that are ending or have ended a relationship and they're coming in to purchase a sex toy, um, or they are starting a relationship and they're coming in possibly with their partner um, to purchase a sex toy. So um, it's, it's interesting to see. We get about equal for both. 
Um, because I think that there is this stigma that, um, or this like misconception that um, if you're in a relationship, you don't need sex toys, you don't need to masturbate. And that's just like bollocks, it's nonsense. Like, don't believe that. Um, these are tools um, designed to help us feel good and learn more about our bodies. So it's, it's good for anyone, no matter what your relationship status is. Um, another good reason is as purchasing as a gift. Um, we do have a, uh, a Hallmark holiday coming up, Mother's Day. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, it can be kind of tricky to purchase a sex toy for someone um, if you are not uh, that comfortable <laughs> with the person. Um, but they make great toys because I think that for some folks, um, sex toys aren't necessarily, um, they're, they're not a necessity. Um, so it's good to get as a gift. And like my first sex toy was actually something purchased for me as a gift. And that started my journey to where I am now. Um, <clears throat> another good reason is um, industry innovations. The toy makers today, there are more toys on the market than there ever have been. And that's just it's exciting, it's fun. It explains why there are so many options. Um, there are more companies popping up, um, doing really cool things, representing a part of uh, the industry that hasn't been covered. Um, just wildly anything like you can <laughs> you can if you can imagine it it's probably out there or it might be being designed right now so um that's kind of what why there are so many options um there's also so many options because we just we're all different our bodies are different we need different things um so it's <clears throat> It's gonna, it's gonna result in you going into a store, you going to a website and just seeing like so many different things and being like, why? That's why. <laughs> um, I wanna talk a bit about arousal and masturbation, it being Masturbation May. My next class, which is um, May 24th, I will be talking more in depth about like, masturbation um, in practice and like solo play and partner play. But for the purposes of this workshop, um, <clears throat> I think that it's important to remember like our arousal um, is, it, it, it's not consistent all the time. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to pay attention to like, what around, like what, how you get aroused, um, how you feel at the peak of your arousal versus at the like the beginning of it. That's a good thing to start looking at <clears throat> um, because we train our bodies how to get off. So we train our bodies to um, respond to the stimuli, stimuli that we give it. And again, our bodies change. And our bodies can thrive off of like variety. So changing it up a little bit is, is probably one of the best ways to get the most out of your, your self-pleasure. Um, like doing the same thing over and over again and you get the same results or you may not get as intense of a result. Um, that's probably a good sign that it's time to change it up. And these changes don't have to be like drastic. It could just be you, maybe you lay on your back when you play. Um, when you touch yourself, you're laying on your back. Maybe you might want to turn over or um, stand up or a workshop about sex toys. Maybe it's time for a new toy or even with the toy you have. Um, I think we all have our, what I call our like, like speed dial a speed dial setting where it's like you go to that setting that you know is going to get get you off um but maybe if you have a little more time you can experiment with the other settings or you know tease yourself up to the point and then come back down and like turn the toy off and, and concentrate on something else um 
changing it up, giving yourself variety, that is, um, that's going to get you uh, sometimes like even more intense orgasms. Uh, <clears throat> Um, masturbation is, um, there's a mindset that goes along with that. And I know like y'all are probably being like, yeah, horny. That's the mindset. <laughs> um, when we talk about mindful masturbation and there is a great post on our Instagram, like just like explaining what that is. Um, we're talking about not just the like prefunctory, like uh, like I have to masturbate and get off and, and keep it pushing type of thing, but really taking some time, drawing it out, um, giving yourself the permission to try different things, um, that it's not, I'm moving as quickly as possible <laughs> to get to climax so that I can go to sleep which there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I am not shit talking that. But um, when we say mindful masturbation, we do mean like paying more attention to um, your arousal cycle, um, the, the tools you're using, the time it takes. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a form of embodiment. And when I say embodiment, that's from desires. So a desire can be a, it, it can be a super specific or it could be kind of an abstract idea. But the point is it's an idea. So it's something that's like out there. Um, and you want to translate that to something your body feels. Um, and a way to do that is masturbation and um, exploring with sex toys. But that is embodiment, taking that idea and making it of the flesh, um, making it feel something. Um, <clears throat> we talk about orgasms. That's like my favorite thing to talk about. There's many benefits to orgasms besides that like it feels good like we <laughs> we can get that out of the way of obviously it it, it feels good um, sometimes it hurts <laughs> but even that like can feel good but there are other benefits and um, feel free to you know put in the chat what the benefits are that you like of orgasms um you know but I will start off with like just the stress relief and the pain relief um, just honestly, I, that's, that has been like such a relief to me, just being able to get into a place where like, if I'm experiencing pain or if I'm like super anxious or stressed out, if I can masturbate, um, if I can get to climax, it tends to kind of help me along. Um, Let's see, yeah, they help me sleep. Um, that is because there are um, brain chemicals, um, oxytocin, dopamine, um, these things that we really like that we are, uh, we thrive off of like feeling good and orgasms. That's that's what all that is. That's all the, the brain chemicals and they can help you relax and go to sleep. Um, someone said energy boost and grounding. Yeah, that's a really good one. Grounding. Um, that's another point I had um, in terms of like kind of getting connected, bringing it back into yourself. When we're talking about um, during this great masturbation May, <laughs> this like the idea of like self-pleasuring and bringing things back into yourself. There's a lot of external stuff going on. Um, I know sometimes for me that I can feel a little bit distant from my body. So um, masturbating and getting off that like that brings it back in to 
like to me <laughs> and, and it's really a great tool. <clears throat> All right, there are two ways for the purpose of this workshop, there are two ways that we get off. Um, one is the, the quick and simple. So like, as I said before, no, no shade to the quick and simple. I think that most of the time when I'm masturbating, that's kind of what it is. It's I, I need to get this done as quickly as possible. It's fun. I enjoy it while it's happening, but if this could wrap up sooner than later, that's great. Um, the second way is the scenic route. And so when we talk about like mindful masturbation, that is what, that's what that scenic route is about. We don't always have the luxury of time to have that, or even just like feeling yucky in your body. Um, it's hard if you're not feeling great in your body, it's hard to then like set aside like two hours to, um, you know, slowly touch yourself and stop and then get a toy and then do this. And then it, it's, you know, we want to get those those feel good chemicals as quickly as possible usually. I will say um, if you are someone like me um, who you primarily do the quick and simple, try to you know, set aside time, like maybe if you have a day off or if you have some time alone, um, instead of like scrolling through your phone or something, maybe set aside a little more time to masturbate play without even the goal of orgasm because also self-pleasure does not necessarily equal orgasm so this is just to feel things this is just because you can because you have the time and you are wanting to feel good and you know that just might be it <clears throat> All right, so there are three things, um, three things to consider before even purchasing a sex toy, before you even collect your ducats and head down to the store or log onto the, the, the greater internet, um, you should consider the first is how is it gonna be used? How are you using this toy or this uh, this tool? And it that may seem like an overly simple question, but remember, I designed this class out of experience on the sales floor. So we often ask customers when they come into the store, um, what you know, like what's the function of this toy? What are you using this for? Because the question will be, I need a vibrator, or I need a toy for men or you know, something more vague. What we would love is if you could narrow it down and like just think about it a little bit. How am I using this toy? This will not only help us help you, but it, it might help you save money because then you won't like purchase the wrong thing or you'll just be a little bit more informed. Um, so think about like how you're using it. Um, what do you have already? So I, I see that um, the folks that are joining me tonight um, have a little bit of experience. So think about what you have already and what you like about it. Um, and it could just be, you know, I like this because it's strong. It always gets me off. It's simple. I don't have to think about it. Or I like this because it was cheap and it works. It still works. I don't know. And then it, it died and that's why I like it. Or it's quiet um, or it's just cute. It's really cute. And I'm excited to use it because I like how it looks. Um, also, <laughs> this is a, another thing that will, if you're shopping in store, um, if you can, if you're shopping to replace a toy, remember the toy that you're replacing. Um, because quite a bit, we will have someone come in and say, I had a toy for like five years and it finally died, but they don't remember who made it or, you know, what it was called or anything. Um, and generally, we because we have so many options and because we know what we're talking about, we can usually find something that, you know, 
that people will be satisfied with. But start taking note of like what you're buying, who's making it, um, you, you know, learn your toy. <clears throat> um, the second thing you wanna consider before buying a toy is uh, the features and benefits. What are the features and benefits you're looking for? Um, and that could be settings and patterns. Um, are you a settings and patterns type of person? I know for me personally, I don't care for patterns. Um, I'm an intensity level type of person. So I tend to look for toys that will have more than three intensity levels. You know, there's some out there that might have like six intensity levels and I will make use of all six of those. Um, but the patterns, I, I don't really care. Um, but I do, I have friends that are like, I got a toy with 20 patterns and that's my favorite thing because there's always something new. I can switch it up. So, you know, decide what, um, what kind of settings and patterns and features like that. Um, aesthetics, that's super important. If you don't like how a toy looks, um, if you just purchased a toy because it's popular, but you don't particularly connect with it like visually, you're not going to be excited to use it. I've done this. Um, I've purchased toys. I've gotten toys that I'm like, oh, well, everybody has this. I may as well like use it. And that's like, this is hideous to me <laughs> and I'm not excited. Um, so make sure that you are like that you see a toy and you connect with it. You're like, this is cute. I can see this in my collection. I can see this in my bedside drawer, wherever you keep your toys. Um, the size, the, the uh, feel of it. Um, if you're looking for something discreet, you know, you're probably not going to want a big honking wand. Um, you might want a smaller bullet or um, even some of the masturbation sleeves. They can get pretty big, um, especially the ones that are like they stroke, they, they vibrate, they do all these wild things, they cook you dinner. Um, but those tend to be bigger and louder and not as discreet as, you know, something that's like a bit smaller that you can kind of hide away. So think about that. <clears throat> um, speaking of feel, the materials. Um, I'm going to talk more about materials like a bit later, but um, do a little research about what like what kind of feel you want to achieve like to achieve that orgasm you have in mind um if you are you someone who likes a more soft squishy toy um do you need something more firm Yeah, I'm definitely a sucker for aesthetically pleasing toys. Me too. I have several toys that I just, I, that I got because they're cute and I don't necessarily use them all the time. Um, they just make me happy and that's worth something, you know, that's part of feeling good. <clears throat> um. The third thing you want to consider is budget. And it can be tricky to talk about money with a stranger if you're going into a shop or even like just thinking about money. That can be like a yucky type of thing. But know your budget because um, generally the more expensive a toy is that it's having all the features it's doing all these things and maybe you don't need all those things maybe if you're like i'm setting a budget of fifty dollars and i want to get the best possible toy for that fifty dollars um most toys um, that we have in store are about ten dollars to two hundred dollars give or take now this is not including something like the cowgirl or the Sibian and generally, or, or even like real dolls, like sex dolls. Um, generally you're not getting those out of a brick and mortar store. Those are usually like direct from the, the manufacturer or, you know, like a custom order type of thing. So those tend to be more expensive, but for your run of the mill sex toys, they tend to be about $10 to $200. 
So, um, you know, at Pleasure Chest, we, we have so many options at both ends of the, the scale that you're going to be able to find something within your budget. You just have to know what that budget is. And I put emphasis on budget because it is when we ask customers, um, it's definitely not to be rude. It's just so that we're not showing you a bunch of stuff that isn't like, you're like, I don't even want to buy this because it's not in my budget. Um, <clears throat> think about like quality over quantity. Um, and this is like in any area of life, but the quality of the toy, if you have it in your budget to spend a little bit more for something that is a bit more uh, well-made, that comes with a warranty, that is from a reputable manufacturer, that toy is gonna last you and you won't have to do this whole process again to find another toy. I'm like, where in the long run, you, you spent more money replacing a, a toy that wasn't made as well. Um, so definitely, Quality over quantity is, is the best way to go. Um, if you're looking to save money, speaking of budgets, um, you know, it's great to, to follow sex toy shops um, on social media, um, visit their websites. Generally, there are sales that are happening, so you can time your shopping with a sale or giveaways. Like we do giveaways quite often. Um, there are ways to um, get sex toys without breaking the bank. So the best thing to do is to yeah get online and find the shops that you like and see if they're having any sales or um, even if you're in a store, like asking about sales, like in store, if you come into Pleasure Chest, we have a loyalty program where you can build points up. There are ways to um, really be conservative with the with the pocketbook and still get some great things. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk where to shop. And y'all answered the poll question for me earlier. So I see that most of you shop in store. But I think that um, just in this day and age, a lot of us are doing most of our, or a lot of our shopping, if not most of our shopping online. Not everybody has the, uh, the advantage of being able to go to a sex toy shop. Um, I, as I said, I highly recommend that because what you'll get visiting a sex toy shop is um, the opportunity to talk to professionals who this is what they do. This is what I do, y'all. Like, <laughs> this is what I know. Um, so it's always great to come in and be able to ask your questions, um, you know, versus making a guess and ordering it and you didn't get to see it beforehand and it shows up and it's like, this is not what I thought it was. Um, we will have a good sex toy shop. We'll have like floor models and testers um, for you to feel. I think it's really important if you can to uh, pick up a, a sex toy and see how it feels in your hand. Just like if you don't like how a toy looks, if you don't like how it feels, you're, you're probably not gonna be excited to use it. Um, so if you can visit a store, visit a store. Yeah, we have a location here in Chicago. We have um, two in New York and we have one in LA. And there are also other great sex toy shops in a lot of different cities. But if you can't visit a store, um, it's great to go online and go direct to these uh, adult retailer websites um, or other like sex toy shops. So like we have a website, pleasurechest.com. Spectrum Boutique is great. Um, just find a place that that's what they do with sex toys. Um, I think that's the next best thing to do because what you'll get on that website that you won't get on other sites is actual information from people who know what they're talking about. Um, you'll be able to see reviews from sometimes I know for our website, like some of our reviews are from employees or from people who, you know, work for the pleasure chest. So you'll get this different informed um, 
perspective on these products. Um, and going direct to the manufacturers. So visiting, um, you know, Fun Factory, visiting their website or Love Honey or um, Fem Fun. You, you know, you're going direct to the manufacturer. You know, you're getting what you're getting. Um, these are the folks that made the product. So they are the best to ask about how it works. Um, if you have any issues with the functionality of it, um, those websites will have like a customer service area where you can connect with someone who will help you through. They usually offer um, warranties and things like that. So you can go direct through the manufacturer. And then the, the last way that you can shop for a sex toy um, is third-party sites. Now, I am not here to shit on an Amazon or an eBay or a Wish or a Timu or any of that stuff. I mean, I don't know if Timu has sex toys. I'm actually gonna check when I get off of this, uh, <laughs> off of this webinar. But the thing to remember is, um, well, let's say, okay, so one of the, the pros of going through a third-party shop is it tends to be cheaper. However, you don't know where it's coming from, um, where you're buying this toy. It, that's not what they specialize in. Um, I have purchased sex toys from Amazon. Actually, I think one of my first sex toys was a gift that someone purchased from either Amazon or eBay, you know, some 15 years ago, 15 or so years ago. Um, Cause that's what you had to do. There were, you know, like I was definitely not gonna go in a shop. Um, and I was like, yeah, send me a toy. So that's what happened. Um, and it was fine. I, I'm alive still. I'm not saying it's the worst thing ever. But if you have the opportunity to go through a reputable site, it is a, you, you have more insurance on that toy. You know that it's coming from a good place. Um, you know that if something happens, you can follow up with somebody and they can help you through the warranty steps. Um, I think buying your sex toys at the same place you buy your, your wigs and your... <laughs> and your, uh, your blenders and stuff like that's, fine. you know, do what you got to do. But I would say that it's best to um, go to the store or go direct from the, the sites. Um, someone said my first toy came from Amazon, but def have come a long way since love getting an informed answer from people at shops to help me make a decision. Yeah, I bought my first toy from Amazon about 10 years ago, it was a Lilo being sold for $40. I'm so glad I didn't get it. <laughs> See, I would have 10 years ago, I probably would have been like, that's a deal. Um, I will say if it seems too good to be true, just like with any other products, um, it might be too good to be true. If you see a Lilo product on Amazon and it's like, oh, this is like dirt cheap, what's going on? Some of these um, manufacturers, they will have like Amazon shops or like storefronts. I know like... Um, like WeVibe and uh, Aneros, but they're just storefronts. That's just so that they have a presence. You can still just go to their website. Um, and sometimes these, these manufacturers, they will quite often, they will have sites on their website. So um, really just like take a little bit uh, extra time to, to find a, a, a secure and reputable site. <clears throat> so, there's a few questions to ask yourself um, as you're in the process. So this is, you've already determined the three things that I mentioned before, like before you start shopping. So things to consider while you are shopping is what type of stimulation do you want? Um, are you uh, someone looking for more pinpoint stimulation? Do you want something more broad? And generally, this is that this is when you are doing the more scenic route type of masturbation, and you are, um, you know, kind of figuring out language around like how you get off. Like, are you, you know, a pinpoint stimulation? Do you need very direct 
specific stimulation? Are you more broad and spread out? Do you like to grind and hump on things or are you more passive and you just like, oh, just give me all the, the feels and the things? Um, consider that um, vibration. We tend to sell, mostly in our store, we sell vibrators. Now we have everything, but vibrators are probably the most popular. And um, know that vi like motors um, can be fuzzy, um, which is a bit more, it's like more surface level um, stimulation and tends to, you'll feel something buzzy in your hand and over time, like your hand might start feeling it <laughs> quite a bit. Um, you might get a little bit of fatigue in that hand because it is so surface level, it's so buzzy, it tends to be a little bit louder um, versus rumbly, which it like kind of penetrates the skin a bit more and gets down into those nerves. Um, but those start off um, a bit more low, like low frequency, and then builds up from there. Those tend to be a bit more quiet. Um, both are valid and both are fine. There are some bodies that respond better to buzzy. There are some that respond to rumbly and then whatever's in between. So um, as you are experimenting with toys, notice what, what you particularly like. <clears throat> um, we're gonna talk materials because um, the question that we get is, you know, what materials are best for me? Like what, what's the safest, what's, what is the best that I can get for my money? Um, you wanna look for body safe materials. Like obviously you want it to be safe for your body. Um, and this today, as I said, like there's so many sex toy options. What sets us apart from like 10, 15 years ago is that there are so many body safe materials. Um, and we tend to think body safe just means um, non-porous, which that is body safe completely. Your silicone, your stainless steel, your glass, your um, non-porous materials that are super easy to clean. They last longer um, if you take care of them um, versus porous. Um, there are, you know, soft porous materials that are still safe if you're just using it by yourself and you take care of it and you clean it the options are so much more safe than they used to be. Um, but know what, what type of feel you want to get um, because they make, you know, silicone can be super, super soft as well. I know a lot of masturbators um, tend to be a more soft uh, porous material. So you will have to replace those over time. But <clears throat> just start thinking about what like what kind of feel I want to achieve and what material lines up with that, which is why it's great to go into a store because if you're in a good sex toy shop, they will know materials, they will be able to talk to you about it and how to take care of it as well. Um, speaking of care, that is a, another good thing to ask yourself because you may see a toy that's like, I love this toy, but it's going to be impossible for me to take care of it. Know what goes into the care of your toy. As I said, like non-porous toys, they're super simple. Um, you can use um, mild soap, you can use a toy cleaner, um, you can clean them up and they won't hold on to any bacteria or any things like that. Um, with toys that are porous, you do wanna take more time and just, just know you're gonna do that like as you're purchasing it. So you might also need to know what else you need to get. You might want to get a toy cleaner. You might want to get some wipes or something. If you're anything like me, which is I'm not getting up and running to the sink <laughs> as soon as I'm got, done to clean my toy. So I like to have like some wipes on hand or something like that. So, you know, as you're shopping for your toy, also think about those supplementary things that you'll need. Lube, you know, lube is huge. That's like probably the next big category that we sell. Um, if you're using toys, have a good lube, um, that is gonna change the experience of the toy. And sometimes if you get a toy and you don't like it, um, if you haven't tried using it with lube, I highly recommend doing that. Um, but know what lubes are compatible with your non-porous toys. Um, the, your silicone toys, you don't wanna use a silicone lube as those like molecules bind and uh, that solid silicone starts to break down over time. It's on a microscopic level, so you wouldn't even see it. 
but um, just knowing that in advance, like, okay, well now I have to get a good water-based lube um, to use as well. And so yeah, cleaning, lube. Um, think about is the toy being shared? Um, if you're sharing a toy, it's you most definitely want to get a non-porous toy or have some way to protect the toy. Um, so a condom or um, some sort of barrier for it. Um, that will determine what toy materials you're looking for and like how much you're gonna spend for a toy that you can share. Luckily, like most most of uh, our toys, um, like vibrators and things like that, they are um, silicone non-porous. That tends to be where we're going now, um, where the toy makers are going. They're body safe, so um, you can share these toys. You can clean them really well. They store easily. Um, big fan of non-porous. <laughs> um, warranties. So as you're shopping for a toy, <clears throat> consider warranties because this happens. Toys, they're devices. They are electronics. Things can go wrong. It doesn't necessarily mean the toy is poorly made. It just means that's how things are. I bought a phone and uh, it was working fine and then it stopped working. And it's that's just how things go sometimes. It's super frustrating, but that's why the warranty, um, buying toys with warranties is super important. And understanding how that warranty works before you purchase it. Um, if you're in store, you can ask the sales associate, you know, how do I go about this warranty? Because um, some of the toy makers, they, uh, they have a registration process. You'll need to have your receipts and, and register your toy on a website. So um, figure out how that warranty works and um, then you'll be covered. All right. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about something uh, that I call the sex toy learning curve. And that is... Um, getting, if you get a new sex toy and you are like, I don't like this. I don't know why I just don't like it. Um, it's new. Uh, it's a new product. It's a new stimulation. And sometimes it takes a bit of time. Sometimes you have to teach your body how to respond to something. Don't give up on the toy because it doesn't get you off like right away. Um, some toys are designed for you to Take a bit of time, try all the settings, try different positions, um, and figure out how it's going to fit your body and how it's going to um, uh, eventually possibly get you off. Um, I don't think a toy is inherently bad because it doesn't get you off. It just might mean you you just need a little bit more time. We have to learn these things. The, um, our bodies have to learn the toy. So don't give up hope. And even like, if you have some toys sitting around that you're like, I hate these toys, they don't work for me. Try to like reapproach them with that in mind. <clears throat> All right. Do we have any questions? Because we've got about 10 minutes left and that's, that's about all I had to discuss. <clears throat> um, well, this was awesome. Um, what do you do if you want a toy that does more than one thing? Um, you want a toy that does more than one thing. Got some unclear. Um, I guess you can get, actually think about getting two different toys. If you are looking for an experience, um, that isn't in one toy, there's nothing wrong with getting a second toy. I definitely have internal toys that I use separate from other external toys and not, I'm not a rabbit person. It's not that I don't enjoy that, um, that stimulation, but I sometimes want 
like the two different toys because those two separate things do exactly what I need them to do better than a, a one toy. Um, or a toy that you can use solo and with a partner, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. So, um, well, one, uh, making sure that it can be shared, like the material is good to be shared. Honestly, most toys can be a partner toy. Most toys you can use with someone else um, or in the presence of someone else or have someone else use it on you. Um, I think just getting creative, um, looking at when you're shopping toys, looking at toys like, okay, um, this I, I'm getting a wand um, because I, the a wand is great overall. It's a full body type of thing. All bodies can benefit from vibration. Um, vibration is not gendered in any way. So it's, I really like using wands um, with partners because it's powerful. Um, it covers the whole body. You can use it anywhere. Um, there are Bluetooth capable toys if you're thinking of like partner play from a distance um, that you can use by yourself. And you can also invite someone else to tap into or toys with remotes. Um, there's so many options of toys that have, that are probably, that might be designed for a specific function, but if you get a little creative, you can use it with a partner, you can use it in different ways. And I encourage you to do that. Like these things ain't cheap. You know, so sex toys can be a pretty penny. So get your use out of them. Look at different ways that you can use it. Um, if you have a partner, um, like, a, like a, a vibrating butt plug, as long as it's silicone, you can clean it really good. Everybody has a butthole. So, um, you know, if you and your partner are both interested in um, anal stimulation, get a good silicone non-porous butt plug and you can share that. So yeah, um, there's no other questions. Um, I did want to plug some future events um, coming up for Masturbation May. Again, this is a great month, my favorite month. And we do have um, two more workshops this month. There's one on the 17th, and this is a workshop just if you're in the LA area. Um, it's called uh, Banging Beyond the Binary, um, Transsex 101. And this is with sex therapist um, and sex educator, Lucy Fielding. And you're not gonna wanna miss this. If you're in the LA area, stop by our store, um, look at some toys, um, because if you attend a, a class, you do get a discount. So, um, you don't want to miss this. It's going to be a great class, and I wish I could attend it, but <laughs> I'm here in Chicago. Um, and then May 24th is my second class. So this is the two-part series. Um, so the second class is uh, Solo Play and Beyond, and I will get more specific about now you've purchased the toys, you know how to go about um, getting your toy. What well, now? What do you do? Um, how do you use it um, by yourself um, as well as, you know, with a partner. So it's going to be good. It's exciting. Thank you for joining me. Um, this has been great. I, I appreciate being able to do this workshop uh, just from the perspective of someone who works in adult retail to try to simplify that process and make this less um, overwhelming because you can find the, the toys for you. It just takes a little bit of uh, forethought and um, questions um, that you need to be asking yourself. So yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Well, also I do have a blog um, that is, uh, the information that I just gave you basically um, in a more uh, condensed format, um, how to shop for a sex toy. And this will be posted on our YouTube. So um, you can uh, have these notes and use this information going forward. Happy shopping, happy masturbating. <laughs>
get off and get off good, y'all. It's Masturbation Day and we love it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you.